Justin Trudeau pledges another CBC bailout, the Canadian press misleads us about the protests, and the Canadian media get it wrong about Aaron O'Toole by saying that he flip-flopped when it comes to his position on guns. It's Fake News Friday. I'm Candace Malcolm, and this is The Candace Malcolm Show. Hi everyone, it's Fake News Friday, the day where we recount the most misleading headlines and stories in the mainstream media in Canada, and we talk about stories that the media just get flat out wrong. So I'm going to start off on a little bit of a different note today because not a lot of media cover this story. Aside from independent media, aside from the journalists here at True North, you may not have heard about this, but the Liberal Party released their platform this week and it included another line item for the CBC, for the failing state broadcasters. The Liberals pledged an additional $400 million over four years, $100 million bucks each year on top of the $1.2 billion that it already receives from taxpayers. So let me tell you a little bit about this. So according to the Liberal platform, these funds are meant to offset the financial pressure the state broadcaster has been facing due to the plummeting advertising revenues, given the fact that Canadians by and large are not tuning into the CBC in the same numbers that they once did. So this is what the Liberal platform claims. It says, decreasing advertising revenues for all broadcasters are putting Canada's public broadcaster under increasing pressure. A Liberal government will provide $400 million over four years to CBC Radio Canada so that it is less reliant on private advertising with a goal of eliminating advertising during news and other public affairs shows. The network's latest corporate plan revealed that last year alone, the CBC lost 18% of its advertising revenue. That works out to roughly $204.8 million in one year alone. Research conducted on behalf of the federal government found that only 28% of Canadian radio listeners rate CBC as important. That is the people who actually listen to CBC, less than one in three say that the CBC is important. Additionally, last year, the CBC reported a considerable decrease in viewers, thank goodness, because the more you view the CBC, the more misinformation you get, the more fake news you believe. So records show that in 2019, CBC TV viewership fell below 4% nationally for the first time in its history. Canadians are already voting with their eyes, voting with what they choose to watch. They're not tuning into CBC. So why is it that CBC gets so much funding from the taxpayers? Well, it's simple. Trudeau pays the CBC to give him good coverage. That's the reality. That's what we see in this country. The journalists in this country are basically open to bribes. You can get paid by the federal government. You can be on the dole, on the government dole, and pretending to report the news in a neutral and unbiased way. And that is why we see reports like this. I did cover this story on the show earlier this week, but I will just cover it very briefly because it is so absurd. So as we all know, Justin Trudeau has been protested at many of his events, this was particularly the case over the weekend last weekend. And so the CBC paints Justin Trudeau out to be some kind of a hero. So here is the headline. Trudeau says he won't back down after protesters hurl death threats, racist and sexist slurs. So here we see the same old thing where the CBC loves to demonize Canadians that they disagree with, demonize Canadians who have the gall to to protest our prime minister, again, painting them as racist, sexist, calling them anti-vaxxers. And then when it comes to Justin Trudeau, well, they just paint him as a hero and ask him his softball questions. So here's a quote. It says, asked if he felt he could continue to hold campaign events safely. Trudeau says his message on climate change and vaccination was not one he would walk away from. No, I'm not going to back down on a message that Canadians know is the right path forward. And that's why Canadians need to choose to move Canada forward at this pivotal time. And again, as expected, the uh, piece attacks the Conservatives, despite the fact that Aaron O'Toole basically has the exact same position as Justin Trudeau when it comes to vaccination. Regardless, they love to push this wedge issue that the Trudeau Liberals devised. You can always count on the CBC for doing the Liberal Party's dirty work, demonizing Canadians, demonizing Conservatives, and painting Justin Trudeau in exactly the light that he wants to be painted. Well, it wasn't just the CBC who was misleading Canadians about 
the protests. You probably saw during the week that there were large protests outside of some hospitals. Here's a Canadian press headline. Again, Canadian press is a newswire, so you see these stories throughout the media, newspapers, digital outlets, television station, news sites. You see CP reports everywhere, so when they get something wrong, it really echoes throughout the entire Canadian media ecosystem. So here is the headline. It says, the ultimate selfishness. Doctors grow frustrated as anti-vaxxers protest hospitals. So the article only includes some doctors who are upset with the protesters, so they handpicked a couple of doctors who happen to agree with what the journalists agree with. So the article just paints all these protesters in the same very negative light. It doesn't mention the fact that some of these people have legitimate grounds for opposing the vaccines, perhaps on medical or religious grounds. One individual said that they had a previous allergic reaction to the COVID-19 vaccine, which was why they oppose it. And the article also fails to mention what I think is an incredibly, incredibly important fact that should have been mentioned right at the top, which is that many of the protesters outside of the hospital were health workers, healthcare workers and nurses. Thousands of Canadian nurses and healthcare workers took to the streets Wednesday to protest against vaccine mandates and take a stand against medical tyranny. The protests were organized by the Canadian frontline nurses, and they were held in 18 cities across Canada on the same day as the Ontario government announced its plans to introduce mandatory vaccines and vaccine passports. So again, don't you think it would be important for the media to mention the fact that the Canadian frontline nurses were the ones that were organizing this? It's people who are in the healthcare industry who also oppose it. But that's too nuanced, too complex. The media like to paint things in the simplest way forward, which is, in this case, doctors and educated people are for forced vaccinations and these sort of redneck, hick, far-right people are the ones who oppose it, not mentioning that, of course, there are different people from different backgrounds on both sides sides of this argument. But again, you're not going to get that kind of intelligent, nuanced discussion in the Canadian media. So the final story I want to talk about today was one that popped up in my newsfeed this morning, came after the French debate last night, and then after some follow-up questions for Aaron O'Toole, where he clarified his position. And this is about the conservative position about banning assault weapons. So when I first saw the headline, I too thought that Aaron O'Toole had flip-flopped. That's what Global News was telling us, and that was what the Canadian press was telling us. But that is just not the case. And for this story, I'm joined by senior True North correspondent Andrew Lawton, who can explain this story a lot better than I can. He understands the gun issues. He knows the issue inside and out. He put out four-episode documentary series called Assaulted, which you should really check out. But he knows the gun issue better than anyone else. And he tells me that this is simply not the case. So, Andrew, I am going to let you explain this one. Thanks, Candice. Yeah, this has been a bit of a confusing one, and I think underscores what I've been saying for quite a while, which is just how little the mainstream media knows about firearms. So in the debate last night on TVA, Aaron O'Toole mentioned that he's going to keep the ban in place on assault weapons. Now, the liberals pounced on this. The media pounced on it. This morning, Aaron O'Toole was asked, I think, four or five times by reporters, and he said the same thing. He's going to keep the ban on assault weapons in place. Now, what the media took from this was that he's going to basically endorse the liberal ban on firearms, about 1,500 different models that they put into effect in May of 2020. This was the ban that we focused on heavily in my documentary series, Assaulted Justin Trudeau's War on Gun Owners. And it wasn't actually that ban he was defending. He was defending the nearly 50-year-old standing prohibition on machine guns, on actual assault rifles. And I think proving that when the liberals talk about assault rifles and assault weapons, they're not actually talking about the real definition of assault rifles and assault weapons. This has been one of the big problems of the Canadian firearms program in the last couple of years is that it's built on emotion and misinformation and fear. So when the liberals talk about going after assault weapons and assault rifles, they're using a term that people deliberately think means one thing, but to the liberal government means another. And and I admit, I was a little bit confused at first when I saw this because I wanted to make sure Aaron O'Toole wasn't walking back on a pledge that is in his platform that I reported on literally the very first day of the election campaign, which is a full repeal of the May 2020 order in council. That remains in effect. A conservative government O'Toole says is still going to repeal that, but they're not touching actual assault weapons. And I I must say here, what O'Toole is doing is kind of using the liberals' 
own weapon, for lack of a better term, against them. He's playing on the same misinformation and misunderstanding that the Liberals play on in the media to throw it right back in the Liberals' faces. And, and I think that's why earlier today, Bill Blair and Melanie Jolie, Liberal candidates, had a very panicked press conference in which they tried to say, no, 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 but he is ba- he is actually ba- uh, trying to get rid of the ban on assault rifles. Don't listen to the media. He, he is trying to get rid of the ban because they almost didn't like that the uh, fake news coverage of this announcement might have been casting O'Toole in a bit more of a sympathetic light. So as a gun owner, as someone who actually owns one of the firearms that the Liberals summarily banned last year, I'm not panicking. The plan is still what it was weeks ago when the platform was released, which is a repeal of this. But I, I think it goes to show what I've been saying for quite some time, which is the importance of having a bit more literacy in the media on these issues so that they can cut through a lot of the misunderstanding and misinformation from politicians. That's my rant. We'll go back to you now, Candace. Well, there you have it, folks. You just can't trust the legacy media in Canada. They're either in the pocket of the Liberal Party and pushing Liberal spin, or they're misleading Canadians trying to simplify the issue and demonizing people they disagree with, or sometimes they're just pushing flat-out fake news because they don't understand the issue and they don't know what they're talking about. Thank you so much for tuning in, everybody. Have a wonderful Labor Day long weekend, and we will be back next week. I'm Candace Malcolm, and this is The Candace Malcolm Show.